Please note, the following story contains visuals that may distress sensitive viewers. It's been 10 days since a massive blaze in a hijacked building in Johannesburg's inner city killed 77 people. In truth, it's a tragedy, decades in the making. In Joburg, hundreds of buildings, many of them municipal properties, have been taken over by criminal syndicates. They're derelict without water or electricity, and yet they're home to thousands of desperate people. We headed to the scene of the fire to remind government officials once again that this was a crisis staring them in the face. We start with some breaking news from South Africa. A tragic story unfolding this morning. In the early hours of the 29th of August, a fire ravages a hijacked building in Johannesburg's inner city. Hundreds of residents trapped inside. By daybreak, scores of bodies line the streets. This is one of South Africa's worst tragedies of its kind in living memory. But the city of Johannesburg had been warned. Hijacked buildings in the inner city are a ticking time bomb. The five-story Usindiso Ministries building has stood for the past 69 years in Marshalltown, downtown Johannesburg. The building has served different functions, from a center for issuing the notorious Dombas used to control the movement of African people under apartheid, to a shelter for abused women and children in the inner city. But several years ago, it was overtaken by criminals. From immaculate to decrepit, Comparing the appearance of Usindiso building between 2010 and 2023 is a study in the progress of corruption in the city. And last month's fire almost gutted the property. I picked up my gown. I opened my kitchen door. When I was coming out of my door, I saw big flames of fire. People, they were screaming, crying running out of the building. Some people, they were jumping out of the buildings. This woman has lived in this community for several years. She's chosen to hide her identity out of fear there will be repercussions for revealing the things she's witnessed. She can't even be seen with our crew. There was too much smoke, too much flames. People, they were coming out of the building like someone who's throwing eggs or apples. Imagine when, when you just wake up and you see the fire and you see smoke and you don't know where this, the fire is coming from. And you don't know where it's been, but the smoke is everywhere. What do you do? People were willing to jump out of windows from a five-story building to escape this fire. The terror cannot be explained adequately. I don't think I have the words to describe what horror these people went through to get out of this building. We did try to call the ambulances, uh, the train triple one. They took about one hour, 30 minutes to come to the scene. The only people who came in time is the fabricants. As rescue workers continued to pull bodies from the debris, city officials and government elite descended on the street. People have hijacked people, there's criminality. Deal with it decisively. 74 people lay dead. In the days to come, that number would climb to 77. It's a wake-up call for us to begin to address the situation of housing in the inner city. But a wake-up call for who? Some of these criminals are even brazen in their criminal activities to the extent that they even resort to murder so as to hijack buildings in order to extort money from our people. Former President Thabo Mbeki's speech dates back nearly two decades. 
For years, we've investigated the crisis in Joburg's inner city, dilapidated, derelict properties taken over by criminals, so-called building hijackers. It seems the crisis has only worsened. So there's a building just right across from Osindiso that is clearly also hijacked, and we're going to go in right now and see what it's like inside. Do you have lights? Herman Mashaba served as Joburg mayor from 2016 until he was ousted three years later. Mashaba had spearheaded a project to revitalize the inner city by reclaiming hijacked buildings. Uh, tell me how for human beings to live like this. Not, uh... It's as dark as midnight in the middle of the day. My heart is pounding right now. We just did a walkthrough that was just two minutes max. Mm. But that world is a dark, scary world that people are living in, in these buildings. These buildings are home to some of the city's poorest residents who are forced to pay rent to the hijackers. On the street, we meet a woman who used to live in the Usindiso building. I can tell you right now, there will be at least more than 100 buildings in worse conditions than this one. Young children being brought up in this kind of environment we had a hijacking unit led by one of the senior legal person. By the time I left, we had already, they had already identified over 600 buildings. 600? 600 buildings. In the inner city of Johannesburg? In the inner city of Johannesburg. Four years since Mashaba's ousting, the current member of the Mayoral Committee member for Human Settlements, Anthea Leach, seemed unsure of the exact figure. 600 up to 1,000. Yeah. For the inner city alone? God, that is high. I'm so glad you're finding that number shocking. It's insane. I mean, the, the fire and, you know, us having been in this position, we waited this long to actually action something. If I, if I take you back to the tenor of Mashaba, he has tried this previously and he was basically crucified for having done that program of evicting illegal foreigners out of buildings. There's a lot of political play in this as well. It basically hinders whatever progress you try to initiate or even start um, with evicting people in the city. We have a constitutional framework and we have guiding laws in the country. But NGOs working in the inner city reject the city's claims. Edward Mulopi represents the Socio-Economic Rights Institute. If you want to evict people, do so when you have um, followed the due process that is set out in law. Meanwhile, some of those meant to serve and protect seemingly have their own agenda. The police of South Africa is involved because they are too corrupt. Even if there is an operation, those guys they will be knowing that at this time there will be an operation inside our staff. Cars like this, the ones that they come there. This one which just passed now, they are the cars that come and collect money there. But I have a new tax shop in Paris. Maybe buy a tablet, buy some tax money, go drink. There are people who come and collect rental money on the fifth and sixth and the seventh. They come out with the money in the plastic bags or in the boxes. We know the cars. It's a BMW, the green one, there's an X5. Expensive cars. Those people, they are genius. They cover their tracks. At times, if they see you, even if the police come, maybe they will what what. 
What we witnessed inside the building certainly suggested rampant criminality. They are hiding drugs, people they're getting raped, they were illegal guns. When this fire started, we thought maybe someone is being shot. From 10 midnight, it's guns. When you sleep, you just say thank God for waking me up. I guarantee you, if you dig and dig, you find out that they are government officials about the Panimad. Police say they're not aware of any allegations against their members. Meanwhile, the mayor's office says that it's not improbable that some city officials may be involved in the hijacking of buildings. Days later, a councillor is arrested in connection with the crime. I'm not a prophet. I just really use common sense. They started in the inner cities like Johannesburg, Pretoria and so forth. They are now in the suburbs. So we you... can't ignore what's happening here because it's going no, to spread? No, go it's going to spread. We are glad today that uh, the building is bent down. Let's hope they will close it down. Unfortunately, it's sorrowful for those who lost their lives. As some families bury their dead, police are struggling to identify the remains of most of the victims. While many residents who lived in Usindiso are picking up the pieces. Joining us now in studio is attorney Notando Shongwe from Lawyers for Human Rights. Notando, thank you so much for joining us. I guess this tragedy was only a matter of time? Yes. Um, before I answer your question, I'd like to send out my heartfelt cond uh, condolences to the families uh, that lost their loved one in this tragedy. Um, it was a matter of time because when you look at these buildings, the states they are in, um, they are not in good conditions for anybody to occupy them. So if it was in the fire that took place, something else was bound to happen. Maybe the building was going to collapse or something. So it was a matter of time. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I went into one of these hijacked buildings in downtown Joburg, and it was shocking. It was scary. Uh, women, children living in filthy conditions. People shouldn't be living like this, right? Yeah, of, of course. Like, no human being should be subjected to such horrible um, living conditions. Um, it's just unfortunate that the municipality or the city in this um, case, they don't have proper plans as to how we can deal with this solution. Instead, they rather bring uh, evictions applications against these people without even providing alternative accommodation for them. Um, I mean, in the High Court of Johannesburg um, High Court, there are so many uh, pending cases, um, eviction applications against these people, and the court can't do anything. The court cannot grant an eviction order if there's no alternative accommodation. So the city has an obligation to provide alternative, suitable alternative accommodation. Mm. So eviction, it's not an option. We need proper solution or permanent solutions to this. So then what would you say is the issue here? Is it the lack of housing in the inner city or is it just brazen criminality that's going on? I mean, there's a massive need for housing in the inner city as it's, it is the economic hub. People come to the city for opportunities to make a living. And it's so sad that when these people come and they des they're desperate, they need of shelter, criminals now see this as an opportunity to cash in on these people. So now um, people are desperate, obviously, then they will try to pay whatever they can so that they can have a, sh a shelter over their head. So I would say it's both um, criminal, uh, criminal activities or, and the massive need of, of shelter or housing in the inner city. Mm -hmm. You know, Notanda, you also speak of how the city is handling this problem. We've known about it for so many years. We've reported about this for so many years as well. But it just seems to be that there is no proper solution yeah. apart from the evictions that you yeah. speak of as well. What should the city be doing right now? I mean, it's a known fact, right? Like South Africa as a whole has a huge housing crisis and there is a need or there's a shortage for decent and affordable housing. So I would say that um, the government or the city needs and all other relevant stakeholders need to come together to formulate a plan, maybe come up with other 
plans or ideas. For example, maybe a provision for a government subsidy, uh, housing rentals for the lower income, um, a bond subsidies for the middle class. Because the, the, the one that we have now, the RTP program right now, it's not accommodative. Even those ones that are beneficiaries of the RTP program, they're still on a waiting list. They've applied in 1996. They still haven't received housing. So it is a huge crisis that the government really needs to sit down and come up with proper solutions. Yeah. yeah. I mean, now we've got 77 people who have passed away. Yes. What do the prospects look like moving for forward? You know, we've seen a lot of the politicians now going in, going and doing the raids as if they found out last week about yeah. this problem. Are they doing enough even right now, now that we've got these fatalities? I wouldn't say they are, because as you've said, this has been an, uh, an issue. It's been a problem since, I mean, back in the days. So I would say now that because we know that these buildings are there and they are not in good conditions. So because they cannot be renovated, they cannot be uh, managed or, or um, put, uh, or rather, let me just say, they, can, they are not in good conditions for people to occupy them. So rather, why not rather demolish this building so that we avoid such tragedies from happening again? Because like you said, I mean, if it wasn't a fire, it could have been something else. Yes. Nozando, thank you so much for joining us for this very important discussion. Thank you for having me. So, what do you think needs to be done to address both the hijacked buildings crisis and housing shortage in the inner city? Share your solutions using hashtag carte blanche.